Hello everybody and welcome back to the GA Fan TV podcast. My name is Aaron. I hope you're all keeping wonderfully well. Back again, of course, with another podcast on the channel. And whether you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, I do appreciate everyone's support over the recent weeks and months. The podcast and channel keeps growing and I do really, really much appreciate all the support on it. Um, and yeah, look, listen, hopefully we can keep growing, keep pushing forward and hopefully take things to the next level. But today, in any ways, I spoke with Wicklow senior footballer Connor Byrne. Um, very good conversation with Connor looking back at Wicklow's championship in 2020 of course in which they got promoted to Division 3 and of course also got that big win over Wexford in the Leinster Senior Football Championship as well so it was a very good conversation with Connor we look back at his time playing for Wicklow and also IT Tralee as well he played alongside the likes of Barry John Keane and David Clifford for example as well so he's played alongside some top talents already in his young career and of course that was in the Sigerson Cup so we look back at IT Tralee's journey in the Sigerson Cup last year of course eventually getting beat by IT Carlo so yeah look listen I do hope you all enjoy the podcast we also did of course look ahead to the upcoming league and championship season for Wicklow whenever it does of course come around and also touched on Davy Burke's influence as the Wicklow manager and some of the work he's done in Wicklow football as well so I do hope you lads enjoy and yeah let's get straight into it okay so I'm joined here by uh, Wicklow senior footballer Connor Byrne um, I suppose first of all, Connor, I appreciate you jumping on and appreciate your time today. Um, I'm, I'm glad to, to look back at the, the Wicklow Senior Football Championship from last year and of course look back at Wicklow's Championship last year as well. I suppose first of all, how's things with yourself and uh, how's the lockdown been for you? Yeah, I suppose it's not too bad. Um, just taking away, you know, uh, busy with college lectures, bit of thesis work, but on the other side, you know, getting a bit of the runs in, bit of gym work, you know, keeping yourself going for the Hopefully commencing back now soon enough if COVID eases, but, you know, doing the best we can in the times. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose, what did you make of uh, the fact that the GA can't continue, obviously, during the, the Level 5 lockdown? I mean, obviously, that was, I suppose, you know, with, with everything that's going on, I suppose it's understandable. But obviously, I suppose, with the with the GA continuing during Level 5 last year, like, what did you make of it for, for this year? Yeah, well, first of all, it's a bit surprised, like, you know, after playing through level five last year and then finishing off the championships and all that you kind of expected to um you kind of expected to return i know after christmas the case has kind of increased huge hugely and obviously the government not had to take action all that but i thought we would have been back by now but uh it's all up in the air i suppose the only thing we could do now is just keep ourselves going and hopefully by the time it comes back now in what may i think it is or end of april early may we just have to keep going and just enjoy it where we can. Yeah, absolutely. Like I suppose with the with the whole situation, like we we don't know. Like I suppose as long as there is a championship, as long as there is a championship, and you know, in hurling and football, as long as the club championship hopefully don't get too affected. Like I think that's the main thing. Obviously, it's people's you know health at the end of the day. Like how, how have you found kind of individual training? Like I know obviously you can't train as teams at the moment. Like so, how have you found kind of the individual training element and, and keeping up with that? Like how's that been for yourself? It's been tough, you know. Um, the first two, like last year, the first two kind of lockdowns were kind of good. Like you had the weather. Last like the first lockdown, you had the weather in the summer, like you know, and the motivation was there. And now this one over the winter, it's been tough. Like you know, it's very very challenging. But look, you just have to get out there and do it. You know, if you don't, you're just going to fall back and. When it comes back to turning up for, for trainings and the manager seeing that you're falling behind, like you know, it's it's not something you want. So it has been tough, but you just have to break the mental barrier there and just get out and do it. Um, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Keep yeah. it going. Yeah, I suppose. Look, listen. I think in the in the current situation, like it's very tough to, I suppose, stay active, stay training, staying at it. Um, like I'd imagine there's a, there's enough communication between yourself and Davy Burke and all the other like Wicklow senior management team as well, like keeping up to date with different training plans and, and everything else. Like have, have you been in close contact with them yourself? Um, I suppose we just had our kind of like our general meetings, you know, just to kind of make sure lads are kind of keeping up the, up the work. He has a great team in there with our SNC coach and all that, giving us plans and speed work, you know, so we, we have enough there to keep us uh, taking over. Um, he has his plans and once things are getting up and going, we'll be a part of them again and, We've been kicking on now for hopefully the championship, I think, now because the leagues are obviously um, out of the picture. But, yeah, I'll, I'll see him ahead for, for the championship. 
Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose what was it like? I suppose being being a part of the the Wicklow senior setup, I suppose in twenty twenty, like for both the league and the championship. Like, what was it? What was it like being being a part of that? And I suppose being a part of that that run through promotion, everything else that came with it. Yeah. So this was kind of like my second proper year in with the senior team, and the injured, obviously Davies' first year. Like, very impressed with his kind of ideology and his philosophy. Like, he's he knows what he's a man that knows what he wants, and he knows how to get it. And the proof's in the pudding, like he got us promoted from Division 4 in one year and the championship win as well in one year. So it's been very experienced, like uh, interesting. I can, you've, I've learned a lot over the year. Definitely my confidence playing at such a high level. Um, it's really, really improved my kind of personal and, and playing with the rest of it. So it's been good, a good experience so far and it can only get better from here. That's the way we're looking at it. Absolutely, yeah. Like I think, yeah. Since Davy's come in, he's definitely done done a brilliant job. Like, and obviously, like I'd, I'd imagine he's been a big inspiration for yourself, like coming into that team. But like in terms of like a big inspiration, like growing up football wise, like who would you have looked at, like from a football point of view? Oh God, um, <laughs> there's been a few. I suppose I'm a huge fan of kind of like the Jim Gavin kind of era, like Paul Flynn, all those sort of guys. Like you know, they were kind of players that I kind of looked up to. Dermot Connolly, I think. The man had everything in my eyes. Like, you know, he could play, pass the ball, shoot, defend. Like, he had that all kind of sort of stuff. Um, that's just so many. Like, the Gooch, you could look at the Gooch Cooper. You know, his vision, his, like, he wasn't overly big. But look what he did with the ball. You know, there's just so many people out there you could look up to. But, like, the Gooch and kind of, like, Dermot Colley, Poplin, and all those sort of lads, you know. They're kind of lads I kind of looked up to and aspired to be more, <laughs> more like... Yeah, I mean, Darren McConnelly, like I know myself from a from a Dublin fan point of view, like he's definitely one of the best players like I think to ever play for Dublin, in my opinion. Like I probably probably didn't get the best out of him in many ways, probably didn't see enough of him mm-hmm. playing for Dublin. But I suppose when you look at the, the amount of players that are on that Dublin team, you can kind of understand maybe why. Like obviously for yourself as well, like you played like Sigerson Cup over the past couple of years with, with IT Tralee. Like do you think playing alongside the likes of... Barry, John Keane, David Clifford, Tony Brosnan. Like, do you think that was a big learning curve for yourself before coming into the, the Wicklow Senior setup? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Playing with the likes of them, like, you know, you learn, you learn a lot. Like you going down there, I was like, God, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have a look in here. Like, you know what I mean? But fortunate enough now I got to start most of the games, like, and just playing alongside them, especially there against IT Carlo. No, it didn't go our way. We were very, very devastated. But like Clifford and Brosnan on the day, like we're just and on like Clifford. Like, you know, he's a man of many talents. He is going to be probably the next best thing, or he is the best, next best thing, but he will be one of the greats, like, you know what I mean? But their mentality and just their natural ability was just, is contagious, like, you know what I mean? Like, you just wanted to be as good as them. And to a part, you, you are, but they'll always have that little bit of an edge on you, but it was very, very good and interesting. And it was a learning curve, definitely, yeah. Definitely brought me on. Mm. Yeah, no, like how good are they in your opinion? Like the likes of Clifford and Barry John Keane. Like, I suppose, it, like, was it daunting in many ways coming into that team? Like, when you see two players of that caliber, like Clifford, I'm sure at some point is probably going to win a few All Irelands maybe in his time. Barry John Keane has won an All Ireland. Like, you've got some serious, serious footballers in that team. Like, yeah, absolutely. A Wicklow man going into a Kerry Pool dressing <laughs> room, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be daunting, but, um, Look, I had, when I heard that Barry John Keane was coming into the mix last year, I was kind of getting worried myself because you were battling for competition, you were battling for spots big time. Like there was six places and four or five of them were going to carry seniors. Like, you know what I mean? So there was kind of one spot I was fighting for and luckily I got it. But no, watching them train, their kind of how they interact with everyone and how they show how they play football. It was very, it was learn- it was very um interesting and just, it was a lot to take in. But at the same time, you're like, these lads are going to be so hard to play play against, like, you know. So, yeah, definitely it was great to be alongside them and it's something I'll have for the rest of my life when talking to people, you know, so. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Like, to, yeah, I mean, to play alongside them, you know, without doubt, I suppose, one hell of an achievement in many ways. Like, and I suppose it was a frustrating as well to see the Sigerson Cup getting cancelled as well. Like, I mean, obviously for obvious reasons, like we were discussing earlier, like I'd imagine... You know, because obviously, you know, you're a young lad yourself. You still probably have one or two years maybe left in, you know, Sigerson Cup football. How frustrating was that to see to see that getting cancelled? Yeah, it was 
a punch to the gut, really, because before we finished up for Christmas, our, that our sports officers and all down below were, obviously, there was no sports action before Christmas, but there was kind of the hope that maybe after Christmas, we might get the Sigerson run off. But a couple of weeks ago there, I think one of the officers rang us just to let them know that no, none of the activities were going ahead. And obviously it was disappointing. I guess my final year in Tralee. Um, so it's probably my final year at Sigerson done, whether or not I can get into UL or something with my master's kind of application what's going on so far or at the moment. Um, who knows? But yeah, it was a real shame. Would have, I would have liked another crack, crack at it, you know, as anyone would in my position. Hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I think, um, you know, I think the unfortunate thing with this whole situation is a lot of the younger players, like whether it be minor, you know, Fitzgibbon, Sigerson, under 20, like, unfortunately, a lot of them have, you know, you know, their development in many ways, I think, has been stunted quite a lot, I think, by this pandemic, which is definitely, you know, hugely frustrating for yourselves, I can imagine. And I suppose when you look back at, you know, the 2020 league and championship season, like, how would you reflect on that championship and league season for Wicklow? Yeah, it was quite good. Um, I don't think we can be too disappointed. I suppose we're probably looking to get clinch number one. Um, Limer just got us out there on points difference after beating us. But um, we were kind of disappointed we didn't get our day in Crow Park. You know what I mean? We would have liked to have battled out against Limerick to see who actually would have clinched number one. Hmm. Crow Park, I suppose, you know, it would have been very, very nice. And COVID just didn't allow that to happen. So that was disappointing. But... On terms of the overall picture, I think we could be very happy. You know, it's it's a step in the right direction. Um, obviously, going into Division Three this year, we would have liked to, with the new format split into two fours, it would have been great to have a crack at some of them. Um, but I think we're going to have to wait another year for that to see if um, we we'll progress more. But overall, I think we can be very happy. Um, we didn't finish the way we wanted to, but the two view, the two outings against Wexford kind of sealed a lot of sealed the year in terms of. Uh, achievement and being overall overall happy with how we uh, performed out the year throughout the year. Mm. And I suppose you were touching on it earlier as well. Like you were you were saying, like playing under Davy Burke. Like I suppose what's it been like playing under him? Like I know he was heavily involved in your club as well. Like what's it what's it been like? I suppose coming into the team with him there. Um, you know, undoubtedly a very experienced coach. With looking back at what he's achieved in the past. So what's it been like playing under him? Yeah, it's been new. It's been different. Obviously, he has his ways of how we want to play. So it was just in terms of getting used to the way he wanted to play. And, you know, it's just it's just the basics of football, you know, keeping the simple things simple, um, doing the right thing, and then just playing to the way he wants it. And as you can see from our league performances, like, it paid off. Obviously, it wasn't the finished article. We're more, there's more to us, but it was a good starting point for him and his kind of platform. So... All we can do is buy into it more, and hopefully, it will bring us on to the next level. Mm. And like, what do you what do you think it was in many ways that I suppose led to that promotion for Wicklow? Because I suppose going into you know the twenty twenty league cha- league season, I think a lot of people maybe would have had Antrim or, or Sligo or Carlo, um, you know, maybe not even Limerick as as down as probably the the real promotion candidate. So for yourself, like, what do you think was kind of the, the turning point or, or maybe the key difference and I suppose, getting over the line and, and getting those kind of key victories towards the end over the likes of Antrim and, of course, uh, Wexford as well? Again, I think it was just us into us, just buying into his kind of ideology and his his way of going, you know. Mm. The first game in Carlo, we, I think we lost by two. It was devastating, you know. We, we, put a, we, we could have really clinched two points there. And then I think we went to Waterford and I think after the Waterford game is where we kicked on. I think we had two or three games. We bet Waterford and then Sligo. Sligo actually, I think, was the turning point, really. Um, I know we went out Limerick the following week. It didn't go too well. But after that, I think guys kind of started to believe that, look, we're well capable of getting out of Division 4. We're not a Division 4 team anymore. We've been here for so long. We're sick of this uh, stereotype of Bo Wicklow. We're not a, they're not a good team or whatever it is. Like, you know, and we just wanted to prove, prove people wrong. Like, you know what I mean? We're as we have we proved, we're definitely up to the up to the standard of being better than a Division Four team. And then coming out against Antrim, I think everything just clicked that day. You know what I mean? That was the first game back after COVID, I think. And everything, it just that was just a taste of everything going right for us. You know, it just went so well that day. A lot of people performed. It was a overall good team performance actually in that in that aspect. You know, um, and then that just kicked on to Wexford and. The championship then you know and it got us over the line 
Mm. Yeah, I suppose to, to come back from the from the lockdown as well. Like I'm not too sure what you were were eating during that lockdown to produce a, a performance like that against Antrim. Like it was it was not sure of remarkable in many ways. Like what players do you think were kind of key, you know, in your promotion chase in your opinion, I suppose, other than other than yourself? <laughs> um, I suppose Captain Dean Healy, like, you know, the man in the middle, like he's a force to be reckoned with, you know, he can he's a good leader. He'll always give it his best, like he always leads from the front. Um, Padre Tool again in the middle again he's a big man he does a lot of running um, Rory Finn you have your veterans there like Rory Finn Shawnee Furlong and like Mark Jackson all coming in there from keeper and then Wayne Donnelly uh, in the centre back line you have so many Dave Devereaux wing back Owen Darcy like you just have so many people there like a lot of us just kind of clicked into it this year and it just showed in the performances like a lot of t- you can say a few individuals won games but I, it you, you don't like it's the team you know and it just showed this year or last mm-hmm. year <laughs> yeah I suppose from looking at Wicklow myself anyway they definitely look like more of a of a team unit you know? like obviously a player like Shawnee Forlong like he's been there you know quite a long time with Wicklow been one of their top players like over the past couple of years what's it been like sort of you know training alongside him and some of the other kind of experienced lads in that in that Wicklow team yeah it's been great he's, as a veteran Shawnee is like he's been around a long time he knows the game well um, he's been very welcoming and like he'd be very uh, he, he wouldn't be shy to let you know what you're doing wrong but at the same time he'll 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 uh, prompt you when you're doing something right like you know he's <laughs> like a teacher in some way you know he's uh, he's uh, he's a good influence in terms of like he'll let you uh, he'll let you on a few tips to better your game or let you know like do this and do that and that will help you get past and you know it's he just up to your game a little bit you know and he's obviously a top quality player over the years like he's he's scoring he's scoring uh, ability is just it's remarkable like so you kind of take things away from him and then of course like like the dean the leadership kind of skills like that you just want to get a bit more confident around the lads and then it'll just it'll just fall together like you know so it's, it's been great playing and rory finn as well like you know it's been playing playing amongst them like it's been very um it's been a good experience all right Absolutely, yeah. Like, and I mean, looking at that win over Wexford, like it was a, a massive win, like to, to put back to back wins over Wexford. And I suppose in the Mead game, like, a, you know, it was definitely a surprising defeat in many ways. Like, I know Mead are a very good team, a lot of very good young players. Like, what, what do you think it was, in your opinion, that probably went wrong on the day in, in, in that game against Mead? Um, oh, God, I, I don't know. I just think we had to be our best that day, you know. And uh, I just think. I don't know, after the first goal kind of went in, the performance kind of just fell up. We just, I don't know, I think we just, in simple words, I think we just fell apart and we just kind of let them play their game and it proved de- detrimental, like, in the scoreline, you know what I mean? They didn't answer on us, like, so, I don't know. I think, the, obviously, the different level and standards, like, they were just coming down from Division 1, we're going up. Um, the physicality, maybe, I think, they were overall, they're a typical me team from what from, Anytime I've experienced, like they're just a very big physical team and they just played their way through us. And I don't know, we just weren't up for it on the day, unfortunately. But look, we'll hopefully come back and get them once er, in the future. We'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, look, listen, it's, um, you know, Mead are probably one of the top teams in Lancer, like, and with some of the young players coming through, like, I think that result against Dublin was, you know, you know, a bit of a fluke in many ways. Like, I, I think Mead next year will, will be up there, there, thereabouts. I'm sure they'll, they'll push Dublin a lot closer. Like, I think they're a very good team. Um, and I suppose, like, looking looking ahead to whenever the National League does come around, like, we don't know if it is going to be this year or next year or whatever the, the plan's going to be. You know, most likely, anyway, you would have been up against the likes of Tip Offaly and Limerick. So I suppose, how, how how would you have reckoned you would have got on, kind of going into that kind of group with those kind of teams? I mean, you know, obviously Limerick got promoted alongside you. Like, it definitely would have been a chance of promotion there. I'd say, you know, more or less, anyways. Yeah, with the new format, was it two fours and the top two teams go into semi-finals? I was thinking mm. you could definitely clinch one of the semi-final spots. I think, I I think we could have like Limerick. You know, it's it's head to head there. Like anyone could take that. Um, tip, obviously, the performance this year getting to Northern semi final, they'd be tough. Um, maybe you might struggle against them. You, who knows? Awfully, I think would be kind of like the deciding game. You know what I mean? Um, over the years we've had, from you could see the championship there. I think last time before we bet Wexford, I think Awfully was our last championship win. I think, but uh, yeah, that I think we definitely could have clinched the semi final spot. 
um, and probably maybe possibly got to the final. Like you know, it would have everything would have had to go well, obviously. But um, yeah, I think we definitely would have got to a, a semi final spot in that group. Obviously, you're paying. I think you're looking at the northern teams then, like Calvin and all them. Like, mm. it'd be very very tough, but it would have been very nice as your first year in Division Three to stay up there and then to get to a semi final. Like you know, it'll be another step forward, and then obviously the following year you'd be looking to maybe get to the promotion. But uh, yeah, I I personally think we we could have got to a semi final. Mm. Yeah, like I suppose you know you know with the fact there's only four teams, it's either a relegation or you know a promotion battle. There's no there's no middle ground, I suppose. Like, is there any kind of good young players coming through at the moment? Like with that Wicklow team, in in your opinion, like is there any players kind of coming through that you think in the next couple of years could really you know break onto that team and kind of make a difference? I suppose for Wicklow in the next couple of years. Yeah, I suppose like you have the likes of Owen Darcy and all that's there, Grode Murphy, and then there's two other lads coming in, uh, Matthew King and Kitty McDonald. You know they're on the under twenties there. There's a there's a few more as well that are coming up through the under twenties and all that. You know, so they definitely are going to make an impact. You know, uh, I can only see Wicklow football going up. The quality of and the standard of our county teams are are getting better and better, and we're competing more as we go into the Leinster kind of competitions. Um, as you can see, the pre, I think was it two years ago the Kevin O'Brien's minor team got to a semi final I think against Calair, lost in the replay. You know, so we are starting to starting to challenge the teams around Leinster and bring up the standard of football in Wicklow and kind of take that stigma away of oh we're an easy win. You know, so I think definitely there's a, a load of a, a load of few players coming through that would really kind of uh, bring us on to that next level as they uh, develop. Mm. And I suppose, like, like, what, what would you kind of see, maybe even as a like a realistic ambition for Wicklow as well over the next three to four years? Like, is it about just building, I suppose, through the divisions, maybe getting one or two wins at Leinster, or would you think even further than that? In your opinion, um, definitely building through the leagues. Like, I think we should definitely Division Two would be a good start. You know, at the moment with the way we're going, like in Leinster, I don't think many teams are going to have. Um, not a chance in Leinster, but I think their focus on Leinster is probably get as far as they can, maybe get a Leinster final day out mm. and then have the best chance you can against the dubs. But I, I just don't see anyone beating Dublin for a couple of years yet. You know what I mean? They're just, they're producing such footballers and then such teams that I just, I think it's so hard for them to beat. Like they just cruise through everyone this year. Like I don't think they really had much of a challenge. So I think it's, it's up to us and the rest of the, the counties to just, get up to their level and try to challenge them that little bit more. But in terms of Wicklow, yeah, definitely building through the, the national leagues and probably progressing more to Leinster semi-finals and go from there, I think would be, would be a good uh, aim for Wicklow. Mm. Yeah. And I suppose like when you look at even counties like Carlow and, and Longford as well, that have been able to put kind of good wins together, like good runs together. You did, um, you know, Cavan in, in Ulster, you know, this year winning an Ulster title and, your Tipperary winning a, a Munster title. I know, obviously, like you were saying there, Dublin are probably, you know, streets ahead, not just of Leinster, but probably the entire country in many ways. Like, what what, what do you make, I suppose, of, of the likes of Carlo and, and those counties going on good runs? Like, does that kind of give you confidence maybe as well that, you know, for Wicklow, that you can kind of have that run that, you know, you've seen the blueprint, you've seen that it is possible? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the two years that Carlo had there in Leinster, Going through the qualifiers, going through like, like it gave you belief that the the smaller teams or the poor or the weaker teams could actually could get up there and compete with the best, you know. Um, but if you're going to do that, you're going to have to do it consistently. You know, you can't just do it for one or two years and then just fall back to Division Four and wait another five or six years to go back up. You know, you're going to have to like the Dubs. You just have to be consistent. You know, year in, year out, or week in, week out. Like you're just going to have to keep the consistency up and make sure that you're remaining to that level and competing to the best you can mm. and obviously like they brought in the the tier two championship as well like i don't know what the plan's going to be for 2021 now they might push it back to 2022 but what were your thoughts on that when that came in um obviously for wicklow like you know depending on if they if they did get promoted then i suppose they they, they wouldn't be eligible for um the tier two but what's what's your kind of thoughts on the the tier two structure uh it's a bit of a mixed kind of a mixed feeling you know it's obviously given us and other kind of weaker counties that would not usually get a big run in championship a chance to win silverware you know mm. um i think was it division three and four teams 
Yeah, I think it's Division Three yeah. and Four teams. Um, yeah, so and, and, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of evening the playing field a little bit, like you know. But at the same time, you want to be you want to be competing for Sam Maguire, like. But I just at the same time, yeah, I, it's just a mix. It's such a mixed feeling, like you just grow up watching the All Ireland finals. Like oh, I want to get there, but realistically, like it's it's a it's a big 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 picture frame for Wicklow, you know. So the the, the tier two is is definitely a a nice step. In terms of us trying to win a bit of silverware, um, and and how they run it, it'll be interesting whether or not to go forward with a first or after the club championships. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to play in it, all right. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose like even playing in Crow Park as well. Like, would that be maybe the main motivation? Like, say, like what they done with Hurland last year, the way they kind of had the the Hurland or, or the the Joe McDonough Cup final on the same day as the All Ireland final. Like, would that be a bit of a motivation for yourself as well and for the Wicklow team that if you were to go into the Tier Two, well, look, listen, at least there's a chance to play in Crow Park. You know, you know, you'll probably, you know, everyone will be watching on TV if it's before the All Ireland final and so on. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think. The day in Crow Park or to play under a crowd, like you know, you mightn't get the you mightn't get the sellout crowd that you would for an All Ireland final, but you definitely get a big crowd. And as you said, it'd be on television. You get the coverage, you know. So, I think definitely that will sell it a bit more to players. Definitely, you know, and it'll make them. It'll make it probably bring the 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 kind of the fun into it more. You know, players are playing for you're not just playing for a qualifier, like you know, you're playing for a trophy, a, a place in Crow Park, and look. It's it's what every player really wants. To. It's the it's the dream for I'd say ninety nine percent of GA players. Like you know what I mean. So mm. it's definitely one of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I don't know. Like maybe further going down the line, even something you know I, I was saying before. Like if they could do something even like in the hurling, where the winner of the Joe McDonough Cup goes into you know the final twelve. So the winner of the tier two goes into the final twelve, the All Ireland Championship, or, or something like that. Even that would be something kind of a of a motivation, I suppose. That you'd still you'd go back into the into the All Ireland series. Um, I suppose look looking back at you know your time you know playing obviously with, with Avondale as well. In the, in the Wicklow Senior Club Championship. Like, what's that been like, I suppose, as well? Like, you got that big win over Rat New in, in 2019 as well. Like, I'd imagine that was pretty huge for yourselves. Yeah, no, the club championship has been very, it's been very up and down for us over the last um, three or four years. You know, I think we've had three county final or three semi final defeats in four years, I think. So it's been, it's been tough, but at the same time, we're up there. Like, we're up at the top four. That win over Rat New in 2019 was, was huge you know what I mean it's 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 it was a win that hadn't occurred in a long long time it was a hard fought one it was cliche right new not giving up they were they were dogged you know they were just not giving up easy you know but we kind of we were confident like we, we didn't play into their their strengths we kind of played into ours and we played our game and it, it paid off in the end after extra time you know um so yeah it was club is going it's kind of um how to say it's we're nearly there. We just need to get over that final hurdle and claim <laughs> claim the county final. Mm. You know, absolutely, yeah. Like and like, how, how competitive is the the club scene in Wicklow, in your opinion, as well? Because you have you know Ratnew, who probably caused one of the big shocks there a few years ago when they beat Vincent's in the in the Leinster Club Championship, which I think caught a lot of people by surprise. Bray Emmett's looked like a great team there as well, and you have yourselves and a few others. So, how competitive is the the Wicklow club scene in in your opinion? Um, I'd say what well, is it? Twelve teams. I'd say probably about six to eight teams. I'd say that are kind of you know they're going to give you a, a rattle. You know, obviously Pats, Tinnahili, Bonton Glass, Ratnew, Blessington. You know, all these sorts of teams. Arrow, they're they're going to give you trouble. Like, but I think we're definitely we're definitely up there. We we're not too far away from in the championship. Like, so we're not afraid of anyone. I think it's we just need to like kind of focus more on ourselves and get over that mental barrier ourselves and release the fear and just kind of play our own game and stick to our strengths. And I think definitely we'll be a force to reckon with once we get to that final, you know, we were devastated uh, last year to miss out on by penalty shootouts. You know, it was, it was devastating. Like it was my first year as captain of the senior team, you know, so I kind of had a, not a bit more pressure, but obviously you had a bit more responsibility on your shoulders. I can try to do as best I can from the front each game. And you kind of did go into the semi-final and then, to lose out on penalties now was was heartbreaking. Like it would have, I would have much rather like a replay or something. But due to COVID, like we just didn't have the time to do it. But yeah, going into twenty twenty one now, I'm definitely excited for the championship. Mm. 
yeah, I suppose I was going to touch on that as well with the with the penalty shoot. Like obviously, you know, they were supposed to do penalties in in uh, in the senior in the in the All Ireland Football Championship and and hurling as well. And we never got around to it really because there was no there was no penalty shootouts that, that ever had to come around. But like obviously, there's talks at the moment about them maybe sticking with that or going back to the replays. Like, where would you see it? Would you kind of prefer going back going to going to replays or extra time and then penalties or how how would you kind of look at it? Yeah, I, I definitely I'd go I'd go for the option of a replay. I think penalty shootout is just not it's not a football it's not a GA football thing. Like you can you can keep it in the soccer, but I just don't think it's part of our game. You know, I think a majority of guys would like to go out and play again in a replay and winner takes all there and go to extra time again and if it doesn't go there replay again you know I just I, I just don't think I'm a fan of of penalty shootouts in, in J football you know it's just my personal opinion but obviously you're going to have people for it and then people against it but I think the replay would be the much better option for mm. people and for games like yeah, I'd actually agree with you as well. Like, I think, um, I think even with replays as well, like, I think you get to see different styles, and then you get to see how teams will adapt and change, like from the previous game. And I think, and I think as a viewer and as a fan, as you know, someone watching, I think you know it's an extra game, so it makes it better. Um, and and I suppose like looking ahead with Avondale as well, like you're you're kind of touching on it there. Like, do you think the county title is getting closer, closer and closer year on year? Like, I suppose you're not a million miles away. You're getting to semi finals. You're getting close. So, is that the huge ambition now in the next couple of years? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I'd say with the year that was in it last year, COVID. I know with Pat Snob and knocked out in the quarterfinals, like you were looking, it opened it up hugely. Once they were knocked out, I think we fancied ourselves hugely. Like, you know, um going into that semi-final against Tinney, like obviously it was going to be very, very tough. They had just knocked out the county champions. Like, you know what I mean? We weren't giving them any, um, any, uh, well, what's the word? We weren't giving them any uh, awareness. Like we were, we weren't uh, been overconfident, you know, and we, were, we knew it was going to be a tough battle and it proved to be. And unfortunately, look, it went their way. They went to a county final and played ball and that, but we knew ourselves we were well capable of getting to that county final and competing against ball and glass. But uh, our, our eyes are definitely focused on getting to the final this year and hopefully clinching uh, the Miley. Hmm. And I suppose like you've a lot of you know top players like in that team kind of coming through at the moment. Like what players do you think can can kind of drive you on? Obviously you have yourself and a few others there as well. Like so, who who do you reckon can kind of be the key difference kind of going into those tight matches, be it semi finals, finals, or whatever comes along? Yeah, so it's like we had, we had a few injuries now last year. A few guys had serious injuries, like so they were kind of ruled out for the majority of the season. But you have the likes of Ryan Cal coming in there. He's a super player, like he's fast, he's agile, he's strong. You know, like he's he's a key player in the forward line. You have Bushy McGrainer as well. He's been coming up through the ranks um, at the underage, both county and the club. You know, he's been there for the last few years playing with us. He's pivotal, like, you know, a bit of height. Him and his brother, Connor, obviously he has the experience. Um the height, the fielding, you know, and then the veterans we have like Barry Sheen, and the man is a warrior. Like you know, you'd you'd love to have him ten years younger. Um, you have like Ross Ward there too, forward line. Um, plenty of players back there. Um, Mark Baker and all these guys. You know, we've we're we're a young team. Like we're not too young, but we're we're at the right age, mid twenties. Like you know what I mean, with a few veterans, but we're definitely a team that's going to be in the mix now in the next couple of years, which is a good thing. So. Um, hopefully we'll be able to kick on. Yeah, I mean, look, listen, I suppose, um, well, look, listen, I suppose we'll wrap this up here anyways. I mean, best of luck anyway with um, with Avondale, like Cheers. whenever the, the club championship does come around and, and with Wicklow as well, like whether we do have a championship or whether we don't or, or whatever the plan is. But um, yeah, look, listen, Connor, I appreciate your time coming on. So cheers for coming on. Cheers. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you very much for watching and listening to the GA Fan TV podcast episode 24 with Wicklow senior footballer Connor Byrne. I'd like to thank Connor once again for coming on the podcast, looking back, of course, at Wicklow's championship last year, as well as looking ahead to the 2021 league and championship season whenever it does resume. We did have a couple of visual issues there just at the beginning. My camera just wouldn't work at the start of the podcast for whatever reason, but we did get that sorted eventually a couple of minutes in. Um, so I do apologize there if you didn't see my face for the first couple of minutes but yeah look listen thanks very much for anyone who watched and listened yeah make sure you subscribe uh, follow on spotify follow on all social media platforms all the links will be down in the description down below and yeah have a good weekend